Hello everyone. The reason for today's presentation is that uh, I received many questions about after this Imad lecture on biomechanics. And um, the, I uploaded the presentation on the group, on the, on the Facebook group, but uh, it was not complete because I did the recording somewhere in the middle of the presentation. So I will give you the silent points, the summary that how to uh, defend biomechanics in an exam, right? Especially for the unseen cases and for the biomechanics part, like what they are having this in a mouth guard B. So the first thing in biomechanics is uh, that you think about from the start of the case, like what you have data planning and from the start of the case. So if it's a crowded case, many times before going for the, like what appliances like lens appliance or lingual large, people go for the extractions, right? So the conclusion of uh, that presentation was that if like what there's fear crowding, you do the extractions at the start, you send the patient to the GP um, and then you do the extraction at the start. And then if the crowding is uh, mild or this uh, by max case, you do the crowding later on when the patient would be on a 1925 SS fire or the requirement of the case. Then about the appliances, right? The NKG planning. In the NKG planning, uh, the conclusion was that you can give the NENS appliance in the parash that provides some that a maximum NKG. And ideally the seven should be included from the start until unless it's a high angle case. And if it's a high angle case, you can delay the seven in, uh, inclusion at the start. And later on, like but near the end of treatment, you can include the salmons by placing them more uh, closer uh, because you want to try to decrease the uh, vertical increase in vertical dimension, and uh, and uh, like but then you do the finishing for the lower arch. Uh, the British are not very fond of uh, these lingual arches, right? If you believe that it's hard for extraction, you want to give um, and these lingual arches, you can give them, but usually there is no such requirement because the anchorage requirement for the upper and the lower arch are different. So there's a good evidence, even by Sandler, that you can give the NENS uh, appliance, but the evidence for the lingual arch is missing. So one can give uh, NENS in the upper, and uh, then the uh, lingual arch, uh, so the NENS in the upper arch, and uh, like what in the lingual, you can simply include the sevens. Now coming to the uh, implants, you can give the implants a good cochrane review by GMB that they are effective than the conventional linkage. But your first effort, uh, being a postgrad student, should be go least invasive, right? So if th something can be done least invasive, you should do it. So you can give uh, like what place, but if the requirement are there for the absolute anchorage, you can use this GMB cochrane review as evidence, and uh, you can use the tabs. But try to go least invasive in your first approach. You can tell the examiner that I have two approaches. One is the invasive one. I will take the consent. And uh, if the patient is in no hurry, I will go with the least invasive one. Then in the NENS appliance, you have to do the, if your one is placing a NENS appliance, he's going for two-step retraction. Means retracting the canines first and later on retracting the incisors. So you have to remove the NENS before the incisor retraction. Because there are some people who say that they are keeping the nens till the inside, uh, uh, till the like, but all the spaces in the approach is gone. So, ideally, uh, to avoid any controversy, the nens supply should be removed uh, once the inside canine retraction has been done. So, this is about the NKSH. You can use tabs. Uh, you can give head case, but most of the examiners, especially in the British exam, they are not fond of the headgear appliances. You can give it. But many of the examiners pre uh, prefer nens or you can give implants, but for the exam purpose, you can tell the uh, like what examiners that uh, headgear is in my uh, like what um, uh, in my like what the biomechanics are planned. But if the patient uh, is non-compliant or the patient is hesitant, then I won't go for the head case. Then coming back um, for the uh, like what um, selection of files, because once you have planned your end case, you go for the selection of files and the brackets. Both MBT and Roth works in MBT, right, in bracket selection. But most of people go for the MBT unless you have some specific justification to go for the other way around, right? And mostly people go for the two-two slot. So one must have good understanding of bracket prescription, right? And the alteration of bracket, the flipping, the switching, 
right? And the swapping of the brackets, like what in class K9, class 3 case, you have to swap the lower K9 brackets. So these things. So you must like what prepare yourself that what is a prescription in MBT, the prescription values in Roth, and how in which situations, like what in if the lateral is felt will displace, how you will manage this by bracket positioning. So once the brackets are placed, you think about the wires, selection of wires. So we have one randomized clinical trial by Mendal that is written in clinical cases in orthodontics, the selection of wires. But there's some examiners which are some school, old school talk thinking, right? So for these examiners, if you believe that like what the examiner is pushing you, like what because in Mendal study there are three wires. See, one six eight activated tie tie, nineteen twenty five eighteen twenty five eight activated tie tie, nineteen twenty five SS that is a working wire. But if you say that if you believe or the examiner is pushing you that, don't you think that uh, these wires will elect pain, they would be painful. You can use the Cochrane review of Vank 2014. But even then, if you say that, if the patient has pain, like what I can give standalone wires, or 014, 016, 1622 NITI, then something like 1825 NITI, 1925, uh, 1725 NITI, 1925 NITI, and 1925 SS. The sequence is up to you, the sequence you use. So make like what additional wires so the patient should have less pain. Uh, but there's no evidence for this. Even there's a good interview on this. But there are some examiners which want to go slow. So at the start of treatment, actively spec. So there is a, uh, a systematic review by Fleming that they are not effective. But some can, can they say that to maintain the canine position, uh, like what we used to give actively specs because there are some examiners which are believer, believer of this, but Ideally, one should avoid these active specs, like, but they must know the reference for this if the examiner pushed them for this. So once the wire sequence have been finished, then we come for the other reasons. Number one, like what we went to a working wire. So number one, overbite, right? Or some people uh, go for uh, uh, like a two-step retraction that is retracting the canine first. So if you retract the canines first, then um, like what that is a conventional view because the evidence is that there's no difference between one step and two step retraction. So if you retract the canine first, then you have to for the incisor if the overbite is increased, you have to think about the overbite, right? So in the lower arch, mostly they are going for like what people should plan for this, and they should memorize one appliance, like what they can go for rickets into an arch or the bus stone into an arch, right? It's up to them, but they must have something in mind that what into an arch they will place, and they should. Uh, see the re uh, relevant video from YouTube, from the literature, it's up to them. But they should have one into uh, like what conventional mechanics for the or pipe correction. For the OJET correction, they have conventional mechanics, right? One, like what, um, like what, how you retract the canines. Uh, Nighti Springs, there's a, a randomized clinical trial by Dixon and later on by uh, a systematic review by Almuzian or Sebastian. I think Almuzian systematic review is in 2018. While Sebastian systematic review is in somewhere 2020 of in general of orthodontics. So think about that how you will retract the canines, right, as a first goal. Then how you will uh, like what um, correct the overbite because the overbite should be corrected before overjet. So for the overjet overbite correction, conventional mechanics, rickets, bus stone, at least prepare one of them for your exam. Then comes uh, the uh, invasive mechanics like TADS. So where you will place the tats, distal to the lateral, the size of the tats, the me by mechanics you give. For the intrian arch, Imad mentioned that in UK, they prefer the one couple system more than the two couple four system. So it's up to you to what to plan. The main thing is you you should be able to defend it. Also, one thing I missed, if there is a sphere crowding case and the canine is over the lateral incisor, you can use segmental mechanics. In segmental mechanics, only prepare one loop, like what Z supreme, uh, sorry, uh, the T loops. And just think about the gable bands. Usually they do not go for this. Like, but what is, is it geometry four, geometry five? They usually do not go for it, but it's a good practice. You must have this knowledge. And it will hardly take like what um, one or two hours to go through these things that the geometry of the mechanics when you are going for a uh, segmental mechanics with a loop. Uh, another thing uh, which was mentioned, the conclusion, if you're not good in loop mechanics, you can even place a straight wire. And on the straight wire, you will retract. No doubt you will lose the tip of the canine and some rotation, but once ample crowding have been relieved, you can go for the continuous mechanics. And 
if some incisor is crowded rather than going for the segmental mechanics uh, if one incisor is crowded like what palatally displaced just skip that incisor and go for continuous mechanics create the space and then like what do a piggyback and bring the incisor forward rather than doing a loop mechanics but you can do the loop mechanics until as you know everything about the loop mechanics the reason for sliding mechanics is that it's slightly easier now uh, comes um, the incisor retraction. So as previously said that in maximum end catch cases, you can even do that, that you can go for in mass retraction. But in mass retraction means that you are going for tats. And you must know that in the palette, where you will place the tats, how you will place the tats, what imaging techniques you will use. Like, but uh, they usually take a lateral cap because the British are not fond of CBCTs. You can measure it from the lateral cap. There's a, a, a reference like what, how to do it in um, a must be orthodontic review, especially in, in, uh, in the first edition. So anyway, you must have a reference like what, how much force, like what, according to Upade, randomized control trial, 150 gram force per site. So you must know that how much force for the advanced retraction, how much force for the inside the retraction. And then like what, if you're doing the advanced retraction, master canine circle last one, you can burn that, uh, the end creature, right? So sometimes people say that we'll do two-step retraction. Once the canines are uh, retracted, they will do an intrian plus retraction arch in the upper using bus stone three uh, three piece uh, intrian plus retraction arch. So if you're planning for one, at least know that how it works because in most of the exam, they're not asking you to do the wire bending. So do not do the wire bending and plan for these things, right? So just go through a video and you will have a good idea that how it works. So this is basically for the overbite. So we covered over jet, overbite, now comes the midline. For the midline, you can give push-pull mechanics. One force, like what differential force, like what more force on one side, one lesser force on the other side by protecting the over jet, right? So, or the pull mechanics only. So, uh, and at the end, you can give this, like what in the finishing, if it's very small, you can give the diagonal elastic. And even if something is less left and that is less than two millimeters, you can depend on the Jensen uh, uh, systematic review published in Engel Algorand somewhere, I think 2011, that a 2.2 millimeter midline shift is, uh, and like what, uh, less than 2.2 millimeter midline is not appreciated by the lay person. So coming to the, um, uh, other biomechanics like what um, like a twin blocks so use a twin block with uh, like what uh, with a softened glass you must have a reference for it the vertical activation the anterior posterior activation is to, done at the start of the treatment while the vertical activation is done later on right and for face mask like what uh, try to use a conventional like what bonded appliance rather than going for the tats and then use the Imad said that he will go for the bandit appliance, but we see the one that is used in the randomized clinical trial of mental that is a bonded appliance and use the petite head gear, right? And slowly increase the force. You can see that how the force level is increased uh, in the randomized clinical trial of mental, like what how increase the force level because Imad said he also believing that philosophy that slowly increase the force level until you reach for 50 gram of force. And for class three cases, sometimes uh, there is a trick like what they give 11 years of patient. So you can use till 11 like what this face mask and try to do expansion. You must have this wagon randomized skin control with you. That expansion, no expansion, the outcome is different. So see the crossbite and these things and try uh, try to go for the expander um, if there's a crossbite in class three cases, right? Also, I missed about twin block, like what, how to close the lateral open bite. You must know about the techniques, the two or two, three techniques. And uh, like what, giving the nighttime uh, twin block or the anterior uh, bite, anterior, uh, like what, incline and deep anterior, anterior plane, right, bite plane, that should be inclined and deep. So coming to the expansion, in junk patients, like what mostly they are not giving you less than 10 years. If they are there, they are with class three. So you can do that slow expansion, but not with a, a quad helix, but with a jack screw or with a, a hyrix. In a patient between 12 to 15, you can do the conventional, uh, 10, 11 to 15, you can do the conventional expansion. After 15, as we have seen that there's a, a reference by Belty Merson that most of the sutures fuse. Most of the cases, especially in um, MOTH part B, 
uh, unseen cases or the biomechanics, they are uh, having a dental component. So do not go for MRPs because this is not a surgical exam. They are not going to give you cases where you plan SRP. So rather than going for MRP, if it's a dental nature, try to place a quad helix, right? So in case of impacted canine, the only difference that comes uh, is like what the selection of the spring to adopt the canines. For the palatal place canines, there's no difference in the flap, while in the buccal impacted canines, you can design different flaps according to the height of the canines. So impacted canine, do not forget, is both buccal and palatal, do not forget to place a TPA. Until there's a crossbite and you're doing the expansion, do not forget to control the transverse end cage. Number two, um, just think that whether you have to place these supplies first and uh, like what erupt the canine or you have to erupt the canine with the help of like what placing the brackets too. It's a good practice to skip the lateral incisor close to the canine uh, in bonding, right? So think about ballista suppling because you can use this suppling without the braces or a fishing rod, the ballista for the palatal impacted canine, the fishing rod even for the palatal, but it can be used for the buccal impacted canines. The size of the spring, the wires use everything. In the palatal impacted canines, you can think about the whip springs, these things like the first rate of the canine, then to move it. If you're using wires, you can use piggyback mechanics or the axillary spring, sometimes also called the ballista spring, right? But this is basically the axillary spring advocated by engine backer. So you must think about that if it's a petal impacted canine, how you will do it. If it's a buccal impacted canine, how you will do it. Rather than planning these things at in the exam, you should think about this thing at home that how you will plan it. If this is the position, how we'll do because there are four or five scenarios, not more than that. So you think you should plan it ahead of your exam. And uh, uh, hypodontia, we all know that if it's a class three case, mostly we are going for space opening mechanics. If it's a class two case, space closing mechanics, right? So these were the main points. Um, and that was the aim of that lecture that uh, you must have a clear focus that what you have to prepare ahead of the exam for biomechanics, because most of the candidate thinks that what should we prepare for the biomechanics? It's only the diagnosis they are preparing for the unseen cases and the communication, and they are not preparing for the biomechanics. So the biomechanics should be prepared ahead with their evidence and the references. So I hope it will be useful. Thanks a lot.